Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the Savage Bobber. This is a Plain Prince first airplane. Uh, I built the Big Bobber also on my channel. I'll throw a link in the description for that if you guys are looking for that. Uh, but this is a really good first airplane. It prints really fast. There's only like four sections to the top part of the wing. Uh, so it only took about 48 hours of continuous printing to print this airplane out. And it assembles pretty quick too, actually. I uh, started print uh, assembling this on Monday and it's Friday today out here flying. Uh, so I, I built it in one week. It's pretty fast to print. It looks really, really cool. I mean, that grid section on the tail just looks so awesome. Uh, it's got flaps on it and uh, it's really fun plane to build. So let me take you guys back to the workbench. I'll show you guys how to put this thing together and then we'll have a little bit of flight video at the end. So check this out guys. Okay, well the first step in building your 3D printed airplane is to get all the parts printed out, which is actually a little easier said than done. Uh, it's a little bit challenging, a little time consuming to get all your parts printed out. Profile 3 is the hardest one to get set up to get these thin wall parts printed out. Uh, that's why I've done a full step by step kind of how to set up all your thin wall settings for getting your flow settings right, getting your retraction settings right. So I'll throw a link up for that. I also did a printer review on the artillery sidewinder and even if you guys don't have an artillery sidewinder, there's still a couple tips in there for printing thin wall. Uh, that might be helpful to you guys so you might want to check that out also uh, but you know i know that printing it can be a little bit frustrating it's a lot of parts to print uh, but just hang in there and once you get all the parts printed out and you start assembling it it's definitely worth it uh, to see a 3d printed airplane come together it's really fun uh, but now once we're to this stage and we have all the parts printed out now it's the fun part we can start assembling it and seeing this airplane get put together and get it ready for the maiden flight uh, so for this fuselage one, I actually just spray painted the windshield on this, uh, but there is a file on the PDF file that you can actually print that out at 100% and then uh, put a sticker on there if you would like to do that also. Uh, and then for the cowling one, uh, there's some supports here. We just uh, removed that with a pair of pliers to get all those parts cleaned up. Uh, and then I went through all the parts and cleaned up all the brims. So. Like some of the like the elevator parts and stuff i had brims on there so i cut all those off and uh, now we have all the parts laying out and we're ready to start assembling this airplane and we're going to start with the rear section of the fuselage the grid portion to glue all this together i'll be using zappy gap medium ca glue and zip kicker ca accelerator Once we have those two sections glued together, we grab this template piece and this helps you get the parts lined up exactly right and get them, make sure they're at 90 degree angles to your build table. Uh, and then we'll just add a little glue to this back seam and I'll use a pair of pliers to squeeze this together uh, just to wait till it dries. This grid section is just my favorite part about this airplane. It just really stands out and looks really cool for an RC airplane. Uh, so we have that all complete and then we'll grab the cowling and we'll glue the cowling onto the main part of the fuselage. And then we can uh, grip, glue that grid section onto the fuselage. For adding the TPU hinges, just make sure that the TPU hinges go into the parts easily before you add any glue to them. Uh, and they'll just add a small dab of glue and insert them into all the parts.
Okay, so now we'll start adding some electronics. So uh, set up these Emac servos and I'll be using the AR620 Spectrum receiver and a DX6 transmitter. Uh, so we'll get all these uh, control horns and we'll drill out the hole just a little bit for these adjustment collars to fit into. And we'll put that uh, washer and the nut on there and then we'll add a little dab of CA glue, spray that with CA accelerator. That'll just keep the nut from coming off. And then uh, we'll set this up to our spectrum receiver and to make sure that the servos are centered. So we'll get the center, servos centered correctly. So that way when we add the control horns on that they're facing the correct direction and they're at 90 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, half the sticker so that way I can add the double adhesive padded tape to one side of the mm -hmm. servo and then we'll secure that into the fuselage. For the push rods, I'm gonna use 1.2 millimeter steel wire. I'll put a Z-bend on one end and then I'll just feed this into the grid section of the fuselage, uh, slide it through the adjustment collar on the servo that we just added. We'll put the control horn on to the Z-bend and then we'll secure that in place onto the rudder. And then we'll make sure that the servo is centered again and I'm gonna actually trim the servo just a little bit so it's at a 90 degree angle. And then we'll tighten down this adjustment collar and then we'll cut that uh, wire to length and we'll do pretty much the exact same process on the other side to the elevator. This is another really cool part to this Savage Bob versus uh, string added to the tail section. Uh, I'm just using actually embroider string for this. So we'll just feed this through all the holes and we'll tie it to the grid section on the bottom. And then add just a little dab of CA glue right there where the knots are tied at to make sure that it stays secure. Now I'll start adding some landing gear to this airplane. Uh, the tires are actually 3D printed also. They're printed out of Verisure TPU by ColorFab. Uh, they're just really lightweight and really squishy and work good for these uh, bush tires. This is actually one of the tune parts uh, that Plane Print made after they built this plane. So you just have to drill a couple holes in the bottom of the fuselage. I just use like a one millimeter wire on a Dremel tool and just uh, put it in the bottom of the fuselage there and then add the screws in place. Uh, and they'll just add some bands to the landing gear. And then uh, now we have the landing gear all set up. Alright, the next step we'll start adding the ESC and the motor. So I'm going to be using a 2204 1400 kV with a 20 amp ESC uh, and I'll be using an 8 by 4.7 prop uh, to solder on the connectors for the ESC and then I'll just add a little bit of heat shrink to that uh, to connect that to the motor. So for this particular motor, it has a motor shaft sticking out one side and then the other side is meant to have a prop adapter screwed onto it. So I just cut off that motor shaft on one side and then the motor matched a little bit too big for this uh, fuselage. So I have to cut it down a little bit. So I just trimmed it and then I trimmed out these holes a little bit uh, so that the screws will be sitting in there just like that. And then the holes all line up. 
and then we'll add just a little bit of Loctite to all these screws and secure the motor. And we'll just use a little piece of Velcro to secure the receiver in place. Uh, and then we'll uh, solder on a connector for the battery. For this motor, I just printed the entire thing out of gray. And then I, in Cura, you can move the part below the build surface. So I just moved the part below the build surface so I just had the valve covers and then printed that out in red. Uh, so that way I can get the route red valve covers and glue that onto uh, that motor. And then we'll take it outside and test it out make sure that all the controls work. Okay, with the fuselage all complete and ready to fly, we're going to set that aside and we'll start working on the wing. Uh, the wing's pretty easy. We just got to clean up these edges a little bit, uh, get it prepared for some glue so the adhesion's a little bit better. Uh, and then we'll put the ailerons and flaps on we'll get this thing ready for a main flight. When you're adding these TPU hinges, make sure you don't use too much glue and uh, make sure there's a little bit of a gap between the control surface and the actual wing so that way they can move easily. There's a little bit of a tab on the TPU hinges, uh, so just make sure that that tab is, you know, keeping that control surface a little bit away from the wing. And then we'll use a hot knife and clean up all these uh, servo holders in the bottom side of the wing and then we'll grab our uh, servos. We'll drill out these control horns to add these uh, adjustment collars onto, and we'll add that CA glue just like we did with the rudder in the elevator. And then uh, we'll take these uh, screws out, make sure you add Loctite for these ones and the ones that are in the fuselage also, so that way they don't uh, come loose during vibrations and stuff. Uh, we'll add a little bit of CA glue to those flaps, and we'll secure these control horns in place, and then we'll set up this uh, flap control so we're gonna add a Z-seam to one end of this and then we'll cut that uh, little corner off so that way it's just a 90 degree. Add CA glue to that and insert that in place. And then we'll make this little piece too. This is out of all out of one millimeter steel wire. Uh, for all these servos for the wing, we'll cut off these uh, little tabs because we're gonna use double-sided adhesive to stick all these in place. We'll hook up the servo to the receiver, make sure that the servo is centered. We'll use our double-sided adhesive to secure the servo to the servo mount. And we'll add that uh, control horn on in place with a screw. Okay, and then we'll, uh, once we secure the servo in place, we'll add a little bit of tape to the aileron and to the flap to center it. And then we'll tighten down those adjustment collars on the flaps. We'll cut those push rods to length and then our flaps are all set up. And then we'll do, repeat about the same process on the ailerons. We'll just add those control horns in there. We'll center the servos, add the control horn to the servo, put the screw in place, double side adhesive to that padding there. We need a little bit of extension for the aileron servos, so we'll add that in place. We'll put that through the Bowden tube in the wing and we'll add a Z-seam, hook that up to the aileron servo and then put that through the adjustment collar. And then once again, make sure that you center that servo first and then we'll cut that uh, push rod to length and tighten down the adjustment collar. 
Now we can attach the wing to the fuselage. There's a Odin tube actually in the windshield of this airplane, so it's kind of nice to actually hide all the wiring that goes from the wing down into the fuselage, and then it hooks right into the receiver. So we attach that with the screws uh, to the fuselage, and then we're gonna set up these struts. So we just have to glue the struts together, and then we'll secure them to the fuselage first with a screw, and then we'll glue them to the wing. To make it a little easier to get to that screw there underneath the tire, I just removed the tire first, and there's also something I need to fix with the tire here. So you see how there's a little bit of gap there? When I was trying to taxi outside and stuff, it was having some problems taxiing because that rubber band is pulling on that the tension on that screw and it's kind of tightening up against the tire so I just add a little bit of glue there on that part so that way it holds it together and then that way when that weight of the airplane is on there it's not pulling on that screw and tightening kind of the, against the tire so it rolls a lot better now that I uh, glued that part and then we will just resecure the tires and this airplane is all done it looks awesome so uh, we're going to check the CG I put a 450 milliamp battery in the nose of this and then uh, we'll throw it on the scale and see what the ready to fly weight comes in right around 566 grams for ready to fly weight Thank you for watching this build video of the Savage Bobber. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Add comments if you guys have any questions for me. And uh, if you guys like videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. This is uh, pretty much all I've been doing lately is just 3D printed airplanes. So I got a lot of 3D printed airplanes on my YouTube channel. So go check that out. Uh, subscribe to my channel so you guys can get notified every week when I put up my new videos. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next build.